So last week we toured the coolest reptile shop here in France, Reptilis. Well, I mentioned in that video that they actually have a breeding facility where they breed most of the reptiles that you can see in their shop. And let me tell you something guys, this is the most incredible reptile breeding facility I have yet seen in Europe. It is so big and so incredible that this is actually going to be a two-part video. So here in part one, we're going to take a tour of Reptilis breeding facility. We are going to see some of the most awesome colubrids that these guys are working with awesome lizards awesome snakes it's all coming up in this video at reptilis breeding facility again one of the most incredible breeding facilities i've seen here in europe i'm dave kaufman and these are my reptile adventures so this is one of many rooms and of course as soon as you walk in you see this big dude wow henry henry yeah hello henry Wow, Henry is really friendly. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, look at this big guy. It's a dino. Yeah. From Nerd. Oh, of course from Nerd. Yeah. All right, Kevin, if you're watching, uh, this is what happened to this particular monitor. Alive and well and so friendly. You know, I don't know what it is with Kevin, but every monitor he has is just a little puppy dog. Look at this. Yes. He has a special... Uh, he has a special touch trick. with him, right! <laughs> it, it, that's exactly right, he has a voodoo trick. Yeah. Yes. How amazing. Wow, well good to meet you, Henry. All right, so where do you guys see what's in here? We've got a dwarf caiman. So there was this man traveling from an, uh, which country in Europe, I don't remember, and he hadn't had the proper paper registration for those animals, and when customs uh, check up on this guy, ask for the paperwork, didn't have any. Of course, Stefan is well known around here. I'm sure. And, uh, they asked him, can you house those caimans for us? At the time, they were very little. Stefan says, yes, no, sure, it's yeah, very yeah. small. The procedure took three years in order to judge the whole thing. Now that we know it's ours, we are going to make proper cage. Wonderful. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Wonderful. But it took a long time to take care of those animals, not knowing if they are going to go back to their Right yeah, yeah, yeah. Or not. All right, so if you've watched last week's video at the actual shop, we saw these Pac Man frogs that were really interesting. There's and here at the eyes. facility, these are the other ones. Look at those eyes. Okay, those are the strangest Pac Man frogs I've ever seen. This is a this is a gene that I don't think is outside of France, to be honest. And then look at this dude. I like this dude. This dude has a lot of contrast. All right, who do we have here in the hallway? Yeah. Oh, yes. Giant night anoles over here. And who do we have up here? You have some gastropholis? Gastropholis. Oh, yeah. Clint, if you're watching, look what they have here. I think these are Clint from Clint's Reptiles' favorite lizards. Yeah. Yeah. And it's obviously very humid in there. As you can tell by my camera, let me just uh, hang on a second. All right, moving on. Oh wait, we're going back over here. All right, we're going in but here. Now is a nursery. So we have two nursery, but now it's not empty because uh, it's not the season. Right, of course. So Stefan built a walk-in incubator because this facility is really big, so you need a big incubator. So behind this door is where all the magic happens. Dun dun dun! Look at this. Is, is this the light or does this turn off the heat? Yeah, it's a light. Okay, good. I didn't want to kill all your eggs. Whoa! Look at all this in here. Okay, so let's talk about your incubation substrate that you're using here. It looks like a mix between uh, vermiculite and pyrolite. Is that basically it? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so same as everyone else in the world. So you just basically Put a bucket of water yeah. on top of a radiator and that increases the humidity in here. And you get two fans that gets the warm air and they are blowing it into the pipe to recycle the air on the floor. Oh, that's so we pretty have ingenious. an even temperature here. Yeah. That's pretty ingenious. That's uh, very cool. Fun again. Yeah? This is a, another room. Oh, look Small at this. room with a amphibian. Ooh. Some and some, 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 some geckos. Felsumas up top. So you got New Caledonian geckos over here. Chehuas. Chehuas. Crested geckos. That looks lily white. It is. It is. I know my lily whites. Yeah, you do. Very cool. So this is like just a normal station. Yeah. You've got uh, your food out here. 
Dishes ready to be washed over here. It's gotta be Necton, and uh, it's a, a German company. Oh, a German company, yes. okay. And uh, we are using it just because we are getting bigger quantities of it versus like the uh, Repashi, we have struggled to have the two kilograms uh, right. bottles. So we are using Necton, but Necton, Repashi, top quality. Uh, so. Okay, Stefan, we need to yeah. talk about something very important. Yeah. Rainbow Mealworms is not only a proud sponsor of this channel, they are the premier source for all your reptile food needs. They grow all of their quality insects in-house, and I use them exclusively for all my insect-eating reptiles. So place your order today at rainbowmealworms.net or click the link in the description below. The only sticker that I've seen so far is the Chicago Bears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I, I go to Chicago for the Chicago show and I take some souvenir. Uh, souvenir. Souvenir. Okay, next yeah. time you go to Tinley, you let me know. I will bring you a Minnesota Vikings helmet that can go right over that helmet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then, no problem. <laughs> All right, so we're moving on down this way. This is a second right. nursery room. Uh, with uh, snakes and some lizard, le leopard gecko and uh, uh, emitaconics, I don't know in English. Uh, African, African fat tails. African yes. fat tails, yep. Yeah. And uh, we have some animals for us for in, uh, in croissants. Next, you, in next breeder. Yeah. Oh, this oh, is oh, a palmetto oh, oh. scaleless. Scaleless palmetto, look at that. So we all know that palmettos have those little blotches of color that come through the scales. But when you have one that's scaleless, look at that pigment coming through. It really gives you a really good idea of what the color of a palmetto actually looks like. So let's see some of your fat-tailed geckos. I actually like these better than leopard geckos, and I know that I'm going to get a lot of flack for saying that, but I have seen these in the wild. I have not seen leopard geckos in the wild. This one is amazing looking. Look at the oranges on that one. And then you're working with all different morphs. Yeah. That one's an Oreo right there. And, oh, look and at this, this is a patternless. And that's a patternless right there. Wow. Very cool. Uh, what do we have further on in? Ooh, wait a minute, we can't walk past these. We cannot walk past these. <laughs> yeah, look at that. That's like a hypo I think or... It's Applegate. Applegate, uh, of course, yeah. yeah. So that's like an extreme hypo Arizona mountain king. Or as I call them, Tim Burton snakes. All right, and so over here, we've got a ton of corn snakes. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah. This is not a corn snake. No. Oh. That is something that... Uh, that's a morph I've never seen before of a Honduran milk snake. It looks xanthic and striped. Yeah, it's uh, for me it's new morph, but uh, I don't prove um, that now. In in the future, I sure I prove that. Wow! All right, you are looking at a brand new morph of Honduran milk snake. So everything began with odd looking animals just like this one. So when he got those uh, those weird animals, he said, I have to breed them together to see what am I going to get. Within the babies, just a few of them had some uh, abnormalities on the color. Sure. He took them and breed them again. And he has another weird color coming up, just like the ones you saw mm -hmm. with the stripe. There was uh, other ones with uh, spots. And uh, he's not sure it's, it's genetic yet. It's still to be proven, but so it's uh, he's working on it. That is one. Of th that is one of the most exciting projects I've seen yeah. with Honduran milk snakes. Yes. Anywhere in the world, seriously, that just blew my mind. Great. Yeah. That, uh, c'est magnifique. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, <laughs> that's the extent of my French. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Look at this. This is a holy crap snake. That is an azanthic mandarin rat snake. You got to tell me all about this snake. I bite to the smaller French breeder, and uh, it's. It's very rare. It's, it's very, very rare, rare. Yeah, it's yes. Very rare yeah. So we haven't produced it uh, ourselves, but we do have adults in the breeding uh, in the breeding room. You might see them later if they are available, because we are off season right now. Right. So a lot of the things you see is uh, not from uh, our production. But if you come later in the year, there's mostly our stuff. I'm going to come yeah. back and do a follow-up video in, in July. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Pleasure. Well, not this July. Maybe this July. Or maybe July 2025. We'll see. You notice that there's a lot of empty racks here that were once filled with California king snakes. Genes that you were working with for over 15 years. Yeah. Genes that we might not see in the United States. And why did we have to 
get rid of them. To get rid of them. They are proven to be invasive in the Canary Island, which are located by the coast of Africa. Africa, right. Very different biotope and climate. Uh, but since it's European ground, the uh, European uh, Conservative Agency, I don't know which one, sure. they said, okay, since it's uh, thriving in Europe, <laughs> we are going to ban them. But obviously, here in France, uh, Belgium, Norway, whatever, we don't have the climate to, ha to house uh, Lampropeltis getulus. Right. So that doesn't make sense, but still, we had to uh, let go. You had to, to get rid uh, of everything. Yes, every Lampropeltis getulus we had. So that includes Floridana, uh, Nigritus, Holbrooki, and everything so on. Everything in and the so genus. On. Yes. We are working with other special projects that we are going to show you. So, okay, that's a loss for us, but Reptilis always bounce back and we are going to have some many more Perfect. things to, to show you. Love it. All right, there is a lot more to see in here. Of course. Let's move on. Uh, so we are now focusing uh, a bit more on rare an anoles and you can find here there's the male anolis transversalis. Oh, look at that. Right there. And the female is not the same color and in this big enclosure it's sometimes a challenge to find it. Wow. Anoles are one of those lizards that I absolutely love and nobody seems to want to work with them and it is so cool to see you guys working with these. And there is the really shy female and you can see the sexual dichromatism which is different than sexual dimorphism. Dimorphism refers to a physical trait, chromatism refers to a color trait. So the females have different colors than the males and that is what sexual dichromatism is. So cool you guys are working with these. In this enclosure are red anoles. These are just absolutely amazing blood red anoles. That is just spectacular. All right, what do we have behind tub number two? Oh yes, that is a Spilodes. So these are sometimes called chicken rat snakes. They're called tiger rat snakes, neotropical rat snakes. And he is acting just like a Spilodes. So you guys are working with a whole variety of reptiles and amphibians here. I kind of expected to come here and see boas and pythons and basically a lot of the stuff that we have in the US. You have a very diverse collection here and this is actually really awesome. So you are also working with these Asian blue beauties. But this line is yellow. This is the yellow line of blue beauty. Yeah. Blue, 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 blue. That was French. Almost. Almost French, <laughs> yep. But look at that. Look at the yellows coming out in this blue beauty. Okay, this is a gorgeous snake. All right, into yet another room. This place is enormous and it's kind of a maze. <laughs> but nice. we've got something special that you wanted to show me in here. All right, so what do we got here? This is something very special. Let's look at that. It's a reverse okay. A reverse okay, okay. But look at that. Fresh eggs just today. But those are those are good looking eggs. Those all look pretty viable. Yeah. Okay, yes, we use uh Spain for the as a sphagnum sphagnum mousse for clutch on after a perlite and vermiculite. And the vermiculites, right, right. I, I, I'm always interested to see how other breeders do it in different parts of the world and we all do it the same way. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's a good way. It it's <laughs> because it's the best way to yeah. do it, right? So everybody does it. Yeah. Oh, look at this. Sunkiss scaleless ghost. So this is a sunkissed scaleless ghost corn snake. This is the first one I've ever seen. And you know, there's just something about scaleless that just kind of brings out that pattern, brings out those colors, and just, you know, if this was a sun-kissed ghost that had scales, it would look completely different. Yeah. So what do we basically have in here? This is uh, another colubrid room? Mainly, mainly colubrids. So um, what you will see here is mainly Panterophis vitatus, um, Lampropeltis, Pichuophis, Ortriophis, and uh, mandarin rat snakes Ooh. So, as well, you prepare office. So, pitchu yeah. office, you say? I'm saying pitchu office. I like the pitchu office. Come on here, my good sir. Mm. Um. Nice big enclosures for them. Oh, yes. 
Oh, ding. Massively excited right now. The snake and me. <laughs> that is a black pine snake. Look at how big and massive this snake is. Oh, this one's funny. He has a, it's paradox. He has a, a red stain. Whoa, look at that. So this is a Southern or a Florida. Patternless and uh, paradox. Yeah, but look at that paradoxing on him. Wow, I would have held this one back too. <laughs> a patternless Southern pine snake with just the most interesting paradoxing. Wow, you are beautiful. You wanna talk? No, you just wanna, you just want some love and look at this, look at this. What an amazingly gentle snake. And look at that paradox. That is a gorgeous snake. All right, so this is a black mamba. <laughs> this is one of the most deadly snakes in the world. And Stefan is free handling it. For the last time. For the last time. <laughs> yes. Very dedicated to my views. That is a gorgeous snake. So it's a Thrasops occidentalis. That's uh, a, um, we can call that a rat snake from uh, Africa. Right. That's uh, evolving on the trees. They are mildly venomous, but they are still uh, some, uh, some venom. Yeah. Some yeah. sort of venom. But they're not that bitey. And they have a special uh, thing about them is when you smell them, they smell like licorice. Okay, let's smell the snake. Here we go. It does. Yeah. I just, I'm going to stand here for like 20 minutes <laughs> and just smell the snake. This is the first time I have ever like really smelled a snake and actually enjoyed it. Licorice. Wow, it does. That is weird. Yes, I don't know why. I can't explain it. But the Thrasops, Occidentalis, and uh, Jackson Eye, they smell licorice. And they look like licorice uh, because of the black coloration, but they have that uh, that thing. Is it because you're feeding them licorice? Ah, uh, you have us. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. That is amazing. I, you know, I of course I know these snakes, but I never knew they smelled like licorice. I'm just gonna continue to smell the snake. You guys go on the tour. I'm just going to stand here with the snake and smell the snake. I never knew that I love the smell of licorice so much before this. That is amazing. I mean, it really truly does smell like licorice. All kidding aside, that is ridiculously awesome. So guys, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And when you do hit that bell, so you do not miss part two coming up next week, where I will introduce you guys to some of the coolest boas, the coolest pythons, and a lot of the other reptiles that Reptilis is breeding at this amazing facility. So until then, love the planet, feed your reptile obsession, and rattle on.